everyone, Dr. Clark here on The Place for Answers. Today I want to talk about the relationship between fatty acids or fish oils and the prevention of psychiatric disease. It's a great study that just came out. I'll make sure I get it right. In fact, it was this month, February, in the Archives of General Psychiatry. The title of the study is Long Chain Omega-3 Fatty Acids for Indicated Prevention of Psychotic Disorders. Now, here's what they did. This came out of Austria, and essentially they took 81 young patients and they monitored them over a year. And these, these people were, are, were being monitored because they had been showing signs of you know, psychotic behavior. Now, not like killing people, but you know, disorganized thinking, delusional thinking, uh, psychiatric types of symptoms. And essentially what they did is, they, all they did is they took two weeks of fish oil. That's it. They took two weeks of about a gram a day of omega-3 fatty acids. Not every day, not for the whole 12 months, but just for two weeks. And they had two groups. Uh, the group that took the fish oil and then the group that got psychotherapy alone. And I'm not going to bash psychotherapy because it really has a lot of good effects. It's a great frontal lobe therapy. But they had these two groups, right? So you got your omega-3 fatty acid group and you got your psychotherapy alone group. Over the next 12 months, here's what happened. Out of the group that got the fish oils, they had, let, as measured by the, the clinicians, less delusional thinking, more motivation, less dis, uh, disorganized thinking. And 12 months later, here, here, here's the really cool part. Some of these people still progressed on to psychosis when that happened. But check this out. Out of the treatment group, only 5% uh, progressed to full-blown psychosis. In the psychotherapy group, Right, the fish oil group only got 5%. The psychotherapy group, 28%. I think that's a pretty significant difference, 5% versus 28%. So what I want you to think about is why would that happen? Why would omega-3 fatty acids prevent someone from having full-blown psychosis? Well, there's a bunch of different reasons, but the main reason is every cell in your body is made up of these fats. You've got a little cell membrane. I don't care if it's your muscle cell or your eye cell or your brain. You've got a, what we call a phospholipid membrane. So you don't have to remember that, but it's made of fats. And if you don't have the right fats, it's not going to work correctly. So at a basic foundational level, cells can't work right. Now, from a neurological perspective, about you know 70% of your brain is fat. So if you don't have the adequate intake of the right kinds of fats, once again, your brain can be specifically targeted for dysfunction. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't have enough fats, you're going to develop a, a psychiatric disorder. But it does mean in this study particularly that these people benefited from only two weeks of supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids. Let me give you a third reason why these things work. The third reason is inflammation. You know, omega-3 fats are known to down-regulate inflammation. And inflammation uh, is pretty much the hallmark of any psychiatric disorder. When you measure them, I'm talking about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, you name it. Uh, schizophrenia, they've all got inflammation in their brain. Their brain is on fire. And so when you use omega-3 fatty acids, it's like putting a fire extinguisher and putting out the fire. So much so that in this group of 81 people, 5%, not 28%, progress to full-blown psychosis. I mean, this is a fantastic study. Now, I don't recommend that you rush out and go buy fatty acids. Number one, a lot of them aren't very good. I'm just going to tell you, that. that's going to irritate a lot of the people that are watching this right now, but a lot of the fatty acids that are available commercially aren't very good. Uh, number one, they can be rancid. Number two, you don't know how they're being made. And, and boy, that's a whole other story about how these things are made. Uh, number three, um, I, I guess I should leave it like that. I don't recommend you go out and like treat yourself when it comes to this. I want you, if you're considering and you have issues that are related to what we talked about, Find someone who can evaluate you both neurologically and metabolically and find out if this is even appropriate for you to begin with. Now, it's not that they're dangerous, but you could be wasting time and money trying to self-medicate. You know, there's no shortcuts. I mean, if you've got a problem, you want to have it investigated, get it investigated. Find out what's really going on so you have a good, thorough workup. Um, and so I think this study from the Archives of General Psychiatry is a fantastic demonstration, of a profound demonstration that nature is very powerful and if we listen to it and try not to muck around with it too much and give it a helping hand when when it needs it uh, we can have some fantastic change because I mean imagine the the change in the life of these people it prevented psychosis that's huge for me this should be standard of care for anyone that's being you know monitored for these type of behaviors this should be standard